All right. Welcome, Katie. And uh, <laughs> all right. We got to fix that intro. Um, <laughs> how are you, my friend? Good to see I'm you. I'm doing great. I actually went outside, went on a hike, realized how pale I am and walked back inside so I wouldn't blind airplanes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm hideously pale. I have not seen the sun in a very long time, <laughs> but I'm doing great. Um, well, you're looking, you're looking more pinkish. So that's Hooray! good. You're getting vitamin it probably D. is a sunburn. <laughs> um, so many fair, so many is, are we, are we already? It's official. We, so many, we random are so fandoms. many random fandoms. Yep. I'm no longer competing with an anime channel. Woo. <laughs> Um, we got a lot to talk about because oh, yeah. I can't believe you're not monetized. Um, if <laughs> you can go ahead and put your channel um, totally. in there, uh, anybody who is not uh, sub to Katie, please do. Uh, you will miss her. Uh, the, you know, spring is coming, and and I'm sure she's going to put on a uh, GoPro and get sucked up by a tornado you know while she's so storm well. chasing. So you're going <laughs> to miss it if you don't get to her channel. It's going to be pretty great. We're just waiting on some storms and you guys will be the first ones to know. Um, I want to introduce uh, our friend, Dr. Adega Aula. Hello, author and doctor. Hey. doctor Hello. And author. High five. How's it going? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, if you hear noise in the back, we got a new puppy and the other dog and they like to talk to each other quite a bit. So there might be noise. Oh. <laughs> Um, Adega was with me this week when we, uh, we interviewed Alan Dean Foster. That was quite an interview. Yes. Uh, and good news for Alan too. Good news for Alan. Uh, Alan has his book, his new book coming out next month. And, uh, oh, any, uh, any work, any, um, update on your stuff that we should know about? Um, no, I'll let you know as soon as I got some stuff going, but it's, everything's progressing. It's just slow and methodical and done right the first time. So. And in one of my books, it's the second time, but that's okay. <laughs> um, all righty. Uh, and I want to thank, I, I want to thank Yitza. Uh, Yitza did uh, an amazing, Yitza has done, uh, he did one for Joe and for, uh, Yitza did a, uh, a caricature of the, uh, the, um, the Raza crew for Joe at the bed and, and, and during where we were doing season one. And uh, he also did one for Alan the other day uh, as a cyborg. So, Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Yitz. It was very much appreciated. Um, and really quick before we bring in Joe and Aisha, I want to do thank uh, Gap Stargate and Tom and Katie for uh, that amazing, amazing uh, preview. Uh, Little cameo. Wow. <laughs> that was actually really fun. I was like, okay, yeah, no, I can, I can make this work. So the, the graphics aren't like really good quality for not being in a news studio. So I was very impressed. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. And, and Gap and, and Tom. That was amazing. Uh, okay. Um, we have Aisha is taking some uh, time to, to, uh, to really be with us. She's, she's very busy and she's traveling. So uh, we're going to bring them in ASAP. Uh, Joe, welcome to Baron Destructo himself. And uh, all chevrons are locked for Joe. Welcome, Joe. Hey, how's it going? Good to Hi. see you, Joe. Yeah. I'm, and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to this because... Uh, I think the last cast member I actually saw was uh, Aisha, who I had actually, uh, I think it was lunch with before she left to go to Montreal where she was shooting her show, Transplant, which she'll, she'll, I'm sure she'll talk about. Uh, but you know what, why don't we get Aisha in, the, in here and, uh, and we'll discuss basically her character and, and how uh, Solar Shockley came to be, presenting the lovely and talented Aisha Issa. <laughs> there we go. Welcome, Aisha. It's an honor wow. to have you. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. That was a very kind intro. Thank you. Yeah, that but, you know, that. You know I, a lot of fans don't know that um, Aisha actually auditioned for another role back in uh, the beginning of season two. And, it, you know, her audition so impressed me. She didn't get the role, but the audition so impressed me that, you know, I was like, I've got to write a role for this character. And Solara Shockley was a character I wrote for Aisha and she just was amazing in the role. I really loved the character. I really loved working with Aisha, incredibly professional, really great at, at what she does and, and super busy, super busy, yes? Yeah, well, I mean, these days it's, you know, 
a little bit harder to stay as busy as I'm used to keeping. Um, I think at the time when I was working with Joe, I had an academy also, right? I think Joe at the time. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah. academy. Tell them. Tell them what that. I mean, uh, Aisha is a purple belt in jujitsu. I'm a brown belt now. I'm a oh, brown, brown belt, belt now. Congratulations. Moving right along. Good. Wow. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you. Yeah. No. At the time, I was um, acting, and then I also had. Um, I was owning and operating a martial arts academy. So I was, you know, developing programs for kids and teens and uh, taking them to competitions and things like that. Um, and then I think I was bouncing at night as well at a nightclub downtown in Toronto. <laughs> hey! in my place. Yeah. Yeah, one job would help the other for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. They all kind of tied together in a weird way. So yeah. So, yeah I remember you out. demonstrating the, uh, was it the sleeper hold on me? Uh, yeah, I still have a picture of that in my phone, and it makes me smile every time. <laughs> Do I look very nervous? Is that me with a very nervous smile on my face? <laughs> yeah. See, yeah, that was my a... first day at the office. That was my first day. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, just letting me know that, uh, you know, does not, you know. He writes a part for you, you and you choke him out. I see how it is. <laughs> But yeah, I know working on Dark Matter was a fantastic experience. Just, um, I think I said this to Joe before, but just the idea of auditioning for something and getting so close in itself was, you know, like a huge deal. Um, and, and obviously, you know, it's an amazing show. Um, but to 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 have somebody, you know, be inspired by you and then share that with you is, you know, it means a lot. And it, I think that it had a tremendous impact on uh, my career moving forward because it you know, it's the kind of thing that stays in the, the back of your mind, even though it would, you know, the odds of that ever happening to, again is slim to none. The fact that somebody um, was that interested or saw something, right, um, in in my work kind of, I think, gave me a confidence boost in, in pursuing, uh, pursuing acting moving forward and just kind of keep going with it. And also, I mean, the Solara character was just just amazing, you know, uh, just so much fun to play and, and, um, cause you were just... coming, cause you were coming from stunts, Aisha. Um, at the time I was, so here's the thing. Like when I first started acting, it was kind of a fluke like situation. I fell into it. Um, I went to an audition randomly, you know, through somebody who was trying to get me back into modeling and I had just started training martial arts and stuff. And, um, I think that the reason that they took me for the first project I had was because they realized they could teach me stunt stuff if they had to, which means that they didn't have to hire two people to play my character, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a stunt person and me. And so um, the first more than half of my career was based on my ability to act decently and then do enough physical stuff to play these fun kind of um, action-y characters. So um, at that time, I think I was still um, riding on that. <laughs> <laughs> when I met Joe, um, I and it's funny because like I, I would, and I tell Joe all the time like I would love nothing more than to work on another one of his his projects because I just they're just so much fun like the characters are so much fun and you get to do so many cool things and the costumes are cool and you get cool guns and like it's just so <laughs> much fun, and I mean playing a doctor is cool at all but like I haven't kicked anybody's butt in a long time <laughs> on TV and I kind of miss it so. You know, I'm being honest, <laughs> but, but yeah, so, um, so it's a weird thing now where that's what I really thought that I was going to be doing, um, was to continue in that vein because that's why people were hiring me for a long time, I think. And now they don't hire me for that. Like I, I'm on this massive project and I have this amazing part, but like, it's very, very different from that. Right. So. Yeah. Joe, what did you see in, in her audition and, and what was she on, which role can you tell us what she auditioned for? Which role? Well, it depends if, if Aisha wants me to. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I don't mind. Yeah, it was a role of Nyx. And oh. it came down to her and 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 uh, Melanie. And they were both amazing. And 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 you know, ultimately sort of you know, people weigh in and sort of what you know what do we want from the character and 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 you know ultimately Melanie was was more experienced than than Aisha at the time and 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 I think you know there was some concern from other people that were like well it's it's like a bigger role and and you know I I personally didn't think I mean I, I could tell she had the chops in that audition 
Um, but really what I mean struck me about uh, Aisha in the, in the audition was that, um, you know, it, it's almost hard to put into words, but I mean, you watch an audition and it, the, the actor just kind of uh, imbues uh, the role with like a, a personality, with like a color, like you can actually, you know, it's not just on audition, you feel like this character come alive. And I was just kind of so impressed and, and ultimately kind of so bummed that, that she didn't get the role. I mean, I was happy for, 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 for Melanie, who was amazing. Uh, but, you know, in the back of my mind, as I often do, um, you know, I will file away uh, an actor or a performance and uh, and you know if I really like the 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 actor, you know, and if it's a role like that, I think I reached out to Aisha and I'm like, sorry, you know, it didn't work out, but you know, I'm, I'll I'll definitely keep you in mind, and and I, I really did mean that. And then ultimately, when um, it came time to sort of create this role for uh, the Tabor uh, Tabor's uh, uh, understudy. I thought a kind of a fun dynamic would be to give him a bodyguard. And then I thought, oh, you know, Aisha would be so great as this. And, you know, ultimately, even though I'm the showrunner, I'm not the one um, automatically, you know, if I could just, you know, um, uh, hire anyone, I, you know, I would, but other people kind of will weigh in. And so, you know, Aisha had to come in and audition, but she still nailed the audition and, you know, I, I, you know, in this instance, it was like just kind of like an obvious. She is amazing for the role, and she was amazing for the role. And um, you know, it's funny she she mentioned the fact that uh, she, uh, um, you know, she was hired to do a lot of like the stunts. I think what was it, Brick Mansions, or or what what was? Yeah, your yeah, I had remember? done Brick Mansions before, and yeah. And 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 then I know um, not in this episode, but in an upcoming episode, you have like a pretty big fight sequence. Ooh. And I remember John uh, John Stead, who you, who was a guest on the on the show, I remember telling me, you know, uh, you know, Aisha is so eager; she wants to do to do it all, you know. And and you know, I gotta kind of kind of pull her back and tell her, you know, no, you know, the, 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 you know, your uh, your stunt double has to come in and, and do this part for you. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that totally. Um, and I think that I got really lucky that you guys, you know, had John said as a coordinator because he, um, I think he, instead of just completely pushing my kind of want to, to participate aside and kind of doing what might have been easier for him really, right? Mm -hmm. Which would have been to take somebody who is fully trained in stunts yeah. and have them do what they do full time as a living. And he really um, took the time on his own time and his his team took their own time as well. And I took my time and we'd go and practice and rehearse and rehearse and try to get me to a place where I could do as much as I could uh, myself. And it's funny because I ended up tearing my, <laughs> my, uh, my hamstring. I don't remember that joke, Ooh, but I injured no. my hamstring doing like this of all the, like the most simple, I think it was like a like a like a squat. <laughs> like it was something oh like no! Super simple, yeah. And I mean, we got through it, so it wasn't. Um, it, I guess Joe maybe didn't even know about it. Um, I, but yeah, that that and it was like a fluke, a fluke thing that totally took place, and it wasn't during anything, you know, I want to say serious that we that we mm. were doing. It was literally just like something that I do on a regular basis. Um, that just, yeah, but. But yeah, I was really lucky that uh, that John said was willing to work with me and push me as far as he could take me. And mm -hmm. he also kind of built uh, what the character's fight style was around what my skills were and what my skill level was and things like that. So I just like completely lucked out because that's really what drew me to acting to begin with. Like it was an opportunity that presented itself and it was just a different thing that I wanted to explore, but it was the opportunity to combine the physical and the, you know, the physical acting, if you will, and the physical performance with the, um, you know, the acting acting. Mm -hmm. um, it was the opportunity to, to take those two things and put them together that has always kind of driven me through, through the industry and like really driven my, by interest. Um, so, so yeah, just having an environment where everybody was just so collaborative and really made me feel like, like I was a part of this character um, mm -hmm. and, and like, 
like helping me to really plug in in all these different important ways. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still hold out hope for the opportunity to to be able to continue that. Um, and I know that it may not happen with Solara, but like I bug Joe all the time. Like, so what are you working on? What are you doing? <laughs> I, I, I have to that? tell you. I mean, hopefully, you know, like like I said, I I, I haven't given up hope for a uh, a dark matter miniseries. Uh, yeah. But also this, I, you know, I think I even mentioned to you, I am uh, this new, you know, uh, sci-fi comedy I'm pitching, um, you know, it, I'm going out with, but I actually created a character uh, called Lucinda Shockley, who is yeah. basically the twin sister of Solara. Of Solara. So basically, if that show <laughs> gets picked up, That's awesome. then you're getting yeah. a call. Yeah, no. and I'm, I am yeah. waiting for that call, Joe. I am yeah. waiting for that call, let me tell you. I didn't want to say that because I didn't know if you told them, but yeah, I yeah. totally am yeah. very, very yeah. aware of, yeah. <laughs> of yeah. Lucinda's nice. existence. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Well. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. happy, like, but, but I mean that you're 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 so crazy busy, and you're in your second season of Transplant, and hopefully, you know, you got a, another three years to go, and then we'll talk. Yeah, well, you know, I guess it it depends on how things line up and all that as well, right? Yeah. Um, you never know, and and I don't want to make it sound like I'm ungrateful or unhappy with the show that I'm on, with the character that I'm playing. Like, it's a fantastic opportunity. It's a fantastic character. It's mm -hmm. extremely well written, and I'm learning a whole other set of skills, um, uh, you know, playing a, a surgeon and, and, and exploring that world. But like I said, it's just, okay. I am a sci-fi action-y girl. That's what I, it's like, that's my, that's my thing. It's always I, has been. I, so. I have you to ask you, patience. You're, you're, you're playing a surgeon. <laughs> yeah. Um, how are you with around needles now? Because I remember that was a thing. She got the role and she was leaving and she was like, I gotta play a surgeon, but I just, I don't like, you know, I like needles. Yeah, it's actually been, um, it's funny because sometimes like we'll just be, we have like, um, medical boot camp. So we kind of run through procedures. We learn how procedures actually work and we have to like, you know, watch videos and we work with medical consultants who are real ER doctors and surgeons and nurses, et cetera, and specialists who explain to us how the procedures are done and we have to practice them and stuff. So just like thinking about it and talking about it, I generally have to like sit down because I start getting lightheaded. Um, <laughs> And everybody laughs at me because I'm like gonna pass out from just discussing these things that that we have to do. But it's really funny because my character keeps getting the biggest needles. Like oh, season one wow. of the show's already out, but like my first medical scene is this massive, massive needle. That's like oh. you know. So from so yeah. So I had to kind of get used to it, but it has helped. It's been a big. It's been kind of like exposure therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, you know, it was really bad. My fear was really bad. I would avoid blood tests. I would avoid going to the doctor, the hospital, but I thought anything could be wrong. It was really, you know, not a healthy phobia as is mm -hmm. most of the case. Yeah. Um, but now I, you know, I have to get prolotherapy injections for my knee. I don't like it, but I go and I go and get blood tests for anything I can think of really just to like <laughs> keep the, yeah. like, keep it normal. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. yeah. Well, see, I found a trick because I don't like needles either. And I actually, I'm gearing up for my second COVID shot on Thursday. And I found the ultimate trick that somehow works for me is you pretend the nurse is like a, a Romulan. And they're like, tell us where Captain Kirk is. And like, never. And then they get it. And then it's like, it, I don't know why. It works. It just, I'm going to have to try that. That actually sounds pretty good. I can see why tortured. that works. And it works great. I love that. I love that. That's totally going to be my strategy. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about Transplant? And just to remind everybody, um, Transplant is a show that uh, Tori Higginson is also on. Yeah, totally. So um, that's right. Tori plays um, uh, Claire on the show, Claire Maloney. And uh, I play Dr. June Curtis, who is a um, emergency surgeon at a hospital that is based on a hospital in Toronto. Um, She's a fourth year resident and um, she's the kind of person um, that works really, really hard. And I think that she's committed a lot of her time and energy to developing as a fantastic surgeon and not so much as a social individual. <laughs> so she struggles sometimes with social skills um, 
and you know a lot of of what we see her going through which i absolutely love about this character is um how to navigate people um you know and they say that like the hardest thing for a person is another person and for a character for a per, for a person like june people are just really really difficult and complicated and uncomfortable um and i really really i admire that about her i can relate to a lot of that about her as well and so the entire process of the entire journey of um exploring how a person like that can present and how that presentation can be misleading um how a person like that can come across as being cold or callous or uncaring and really sometimes they are the most empathetic and compassionate um and caring people um in the room they just don't know how to how to share that and how to open up and and uh and let people know that so mm. um the writing is incredible um like i said i'm absolutely in love with the character um and i'm trying to convince them to let her kick someone's ass it hasn't worked so far <laughs> but i still have time so so we'll see how that goes but um but yeah it's as it as with you know uh, almost all the characters that I've played, there's been an opportunity for self-exploration through that journey and getting to know myself better. And, you know, in this case, working on my own communication skills and social skills and, and things like that. So yeah, fantastic opportunity for sure. Uh, give me one sec, Aisha. Um, Dave, uh, John Burns, thank you. Uh, David Hewlett was in the first uh, Apes movie. He played a pilot. Tyler Labine play, uh, plays a guy who gets infected and coughs on David. Uh, who? Oh, I'm sorry. Tyler Bean plays a guy who gets infected because of David and spreads the virus. Thank you, John Burns, for the super chat. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. And um, uh, Michael Weir, thank you for uh, Joe, a new yeah, fan. This is great. Love it. Uh, just found Dark Matter and I fell in love with it. Just finished all three seasons in a Dagger Rules. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> And uh, Darius, uh, thank you for thank you very much, Darius, uh, for the uh, super sticker. And uh, really quick, I just want to see. Uh, thank you for the popcorn super sticker, Darius. I appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, uh, Dega, did you have a question for uh, Aisha? Um, there was a two things. Um, first one is is I really understand what you were talking about when you're talking this uh uh transplant doctor that you're doing because well i come from a doctor background I had to retire a few years ago long story but i've known a lot and over the years there's a thing that happens with some doctors where they have certain amount of successes and their mindset starts thinking that i'm super wonderful and they're catch with humanity and everything else starts to separate. They don't realize it's the procedure. It's what other people have done beforehand that allowed this person to be successful in your treatment and they get for themselves. And like you said, not all of them, but a lot of them will separate themselves. Other people just separate because they don't want to feel the emotion of each individual moment. You know, all these different people coming in with all these different problems. And if you suck it in, you get separated from it. And I understand what you're saying. There's a lot of reasons for it. And it's beautiful that you caught on with that. The other thing is going back to the beginning when Joe said that he said, yeah, thanks for showing up. Here's your letter. Maybe I'll call you. Did you believe that? Um, I think that at that stage in my career, I believed everything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm still a little bit like that in the sense that like, I try to take people at face value. I don't have any reason to believe, you know, that people, like I forget that people say things they don't mean, not necessarily, you know, with malintent, but I think in, in Joe's case, like I, I believed him, um, but I for, I probably, like, I forgot about it. Do you know what well, I mean? It, to, the way he presented <laughs> it when he was talking about it, it sounded like almost like a form letter, you know, and people say, oh yeah, they say they're gonna call, you know, and you just throw it away and yeah. move on. So I wasn't sure, but that's cool that he presented that to you. That oh way. yeah, no, no, no. I, I mean, it's happened before where, you know, you don't get an audition and they tell you they really liked you and you were great. And if anything else comes up, they're gonna let you know and blah, blah, blah. But like, it doesn't happen. Um, do you know what I mean? And and uh, so it's not, it wasn't so much a question of not believing him, but it was like more that when it did happen, I was like, I can't believe that that happened. If, if right. that makes sense. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was something else. But I think that it like that entire process um, just helped me. Like I 
I want to say I got to know Joe in that through that process or just kind of like the kind of person he is. Um, that is just a really good example of that. Like his level of integrity is extremely high. And that's something that I respect a lot. Um, and it's not something that you see like that kind of that level of transparency and, and integrity is not something you see. You can, it's not something that like, it's not like I said, you don't, you don't expect people not to have it, but you don't like count on people to have it either. And um, but in Joe's case, I've I have still to this day always felt that I could count on that from him. Um, is like a certain level of integrity and transparency, which are just like paramount to me. So, um, so yeah, it's just such a perfect example of I just think of how everybody kind of sees him or or values him and knows him. Um, it's pretty general consensus. Everybody likes Joe quite a bit. So. Oh, yeah. We all love Joe here. Everybody <laughs> does. Uh, very, yeah. very Thank nice. you. Yeah. Uh, Aisha, did you? Um, we know we know you're you have a very high level of physical activity, and do you want to? I think fans might be curious to 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 know, like in your day to day, how often do you get to the gym? How often do you get to train? Uh, are you able to on a on a daily basis or? Right. So um, for a long time, I was not able to train at all, and then they reopened academies and, and gyms and stuff for 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 a little while. And then because um, I competed, I was competing as part of like a competitive team, I guess we kind of fell into like a competitive athlete type program. Um, and so I was training for the Masters World Championships uh, for a while before the holidays. Um, in in what, was, Aisha? For, for the Masters World Championships for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. For um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, okay. Yeah, so I mean, I've competed before, right? I've comp competed throughout my career um, and I've had to stop training for long periods of time because I've had to work and, and things like that. But this was like a very small window where transplant was delayed and, you know, and there was a small opportunity to kind of go and compete and stuff. And um, right before, like a week before I was supposed to go, I injured my knee and dislocated my proximal tibial fibular joint, which is a little joint on the outside of your knee. Um, and I went and I competed anyways, and I didn't win, but I, I was very happy with my performance, <laughs> but I'm still now dealing with the remnants of having not completely just kind of stopped everything and allowed it to immediately start healing. I push it and push it. So I haven't damaged any ligaments, um, but they are uh, stretched to their limit. And so the, the joint is unstable and kind of slips in and out. So I have to give it time to kind of to have the limit ligaments um, tighten on their like kind of tighten. So I'm doing some prolotherapy to help scarify the ligaments and help them tighten a little bit faster, but I'm not there yet. But training right now, I think for everybody is not really something we can do. Um, it's also, you know, when we're in the middle of filming a show, we have to be extra responsible because if any, if we, if anything happens in, and you know, even as even if I think I'm training in a, a very safe bubble, if somebody is um, is sick or or is maybe not protecting themselves as well or whatever, and I happen to contract something, even though I'm, you know, not really in the high risk category for for having issues, I could shut down an entire operation and put everybody out of work. So, Ooh. you know, but that's the reality of like working on a show, right? Um, as a series regular, it's kind of mm -hmm. like. A, if I if I get sick, that like that just kind of <laughs> throws every that costs the production a lot of money. But also, um, if I go in there not even knowing, for example, that I could be sick, then I could I could just shut down the entire operation, and I I wouldn't want to be responsible for that. So um, when I so do, do you, train, do you, do you have a personal. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But do you have a personal regimen then that you do on your own? Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. So uh, what I do do is I I I operate with like personal trainers um, that I, because I live by myself, so I can operate sometimes like with a personal trainer who can help kind of push my limits. I don't do jujitsu because of the, the contact required for that. Um, but just to kind of rehab my knee, for example, um, I need to do certain exercises and watch my form and all of these things are very difficult to do on my own. So working with a trainer allows me to do that. Um, but it's nowhere near what I'm used to doing which is difficult psychologically because it, it's a management tool that I use, right? It's a regulation I've got tool a that I don't have a follow-up question with that, if you don't mind. Um, sure. I've done some Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. I did a lot of Shirinji Kempo, which is kind of designed to go against Gracie. But um, 
I don't recall when I did jujitsu, they did a lot of meditation. Do you have a meditation routine? Because with the other martial arts I did, they do meditation and you can, some of the studies show that the performance level is really, really high, even with just meditation after you know stuff. So if you, I, if you do it, great. If you don't, it might be able to help your knee, a lot of other processes going on with you to keep that I, skill level up. I think that, you, first of all, I think that you're right. Meditation is, you know, has been proven to be fantastic for so many different reasons. And um, in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it is like Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, like you said, it's not something that's focused on. There's that kind of mind-body connection. We don't really talk about it. It's really the more sport it's the most of all the martial arts. I think it's the most sports centered, the most the most sport centered ones, the most competitive, you know, kind of that yeah, kind of energy yeah. and that kind of attitude, um, which is not always great. Um, but I think that for me, most of my kind of meditative state comes from being in the zone while I'm doing my my roles because there's only so much I can think about while I'm actively sparring with somebody who's you know trying to put me to sleep or <laughs> like right. take my arm right. off. You know, so um, so for me, that's kind of how I use it as meditation. Um, and then I would do my meditation kind of separately at home. I, I like guided meditations. Um, so sometimes I'll just put one on before bed type thing. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I don't think I've oh. ever meditated in my life. <laughs> it's hard. It's really hard. It works better when you're exhausted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then when you have a, uh, a, uh, a master with a stick behind you and a few movies smacks you upside the head with it. Yeah. And that's yeah. Japanese for you. Keep your oh, mind. Yeah, that, that, that might work too. I don't know. <laughs> Joe, do you want to take this question from uh, Jeff? Uh, did, uh, did Aisha have any uh, input into her backstory? Um, you know, when we write our scripts, uh, we write them or, or really break the this, this season before we even get into the beginning of the season. So we had pretty much up to 11 episodes fleshed out and a pretty good idea of the backstory. So it's not that we didn't value uh, the actor's input, but the fact is that just to be ready for production, we had to have everything uh, pretty much ready to go by day one and so um i mean it's not always the case but i just i'm a firm believer in having uh as many scripts as possible on hand before you start uh so so for that reason i kind of had an idea of of, of her backstory and, and it's hinted that actually in the very beginning you know we talk about her uh her uh you know her, her kind of military background here and uh and her resume that uh um you know, sadly went unread. But, uh, <laughs> I felt that on a level I didn't know existed. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say also, one of the things, you know, I love about Aisha is, you know, uh, and, and I'm, I talked about this before, is the importance of, of a sense of humor, of the character having a sense of humor. And her character brings a sense of humor that's totally different from any of the other characters. And she was so great, especially in her... Um, you know, her, her head butting with, uh, with three, uh, yeah. is great. And also her, obviously her relationship with, uh, with, uh, uh, with Adrian. Yeah. Adrian was a lot of fun to, a lot of fun to play with a mm. lot of fun to play <laughs> with. I, I, I really loved what he did with his character as well. Um, yeah. I thought he was hilarious. Um, yeah, no, a lot of good times, a lot of laughs. I, I just... I really, I love that duo. I thought you did a, a great job with uh, with creating them. Yeah, I was happy to be a part of that. I was gonna ask you, did you get to keep the coat? The coat you're wearing in the this? The long this. one, I don't have the long one, no. I got, I have the short one. I, but I, I, say, I really wanted the long one. <laughs> I have to say, you know, all the character wardrobes, I really love the Solara wardrobe. So to this yeah. coat, I think is amazing. And then you, you have another kind of coat, like a shorter coat. But then- Yeah, the leather one. But then the outfit that that you, we see you wear probably in the next episode, which you'll see a picture of actually I have in the behind the scenes shot, was actually one of uh, my favorite outfits that Noreen put together. Which one is, which was the other one? The one is the green? kind of like a mix of leather, I think, or, or, or there was a pleather and- uh, Yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's, that was really nice. But the, it's like a sleeve, it's, it's like a shrug almost, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. 
and that was totally custom made. Like that was made from scratch with the details oh, wow. on the shoulder yes. and stuff. Like that, that's yeah. why that, that's why I loved it because it was kind of unlike anything I'd seen before. But it was just yeah. perfectly suited to your character. Yeah. No. Totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah that was definitely a very cool. Um, the way the whole character was thrown together was mm -hmm. just really mm -hmm. awesome. Really, really awesome. She was, I like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm really glad uh, you got this role because uh, the thing with me is I'm watching it episode by episode. So your character is still alive. It's like Schrodinger's cat. Will Joe kill off this person? Will Joe <laughs> let this person live? So I'm very glad that your character is still alive. <laughs> Who knows what the future holds? Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> that could change. We never know what Joe's up to. He could be writing it out right now. Oh, All right, we got her on the show. <laughs> Check. Get rid of her. Oh, yeah. Season four happens and it's just nope, nope. Axed. Dead. Dead. <laughs> dead. <laughs> so it was exactly. better you you weren't Nix, a Aisha. Yeah, yeah. Definitely I mean better. It, it definitely worked out, right? There's always Heck a yes. there's always a comeback for Solara. Um but I think Melody, I mean, Melody did a great job with Nick. Yeah. I think that it worked out, I think it worked out perfectly, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of thanks to Joe, I think, it, obviously thanks to Joe, that, yeah. you know, he was able to kind of find a way to make use of what he saw in both of us. So, um, so that was great. But no, I think that she did a fantastic job with so There Nick's. you go. There's, there's the, uh, oh, cool. that, that uh, outfit. Love it. Yeah, that's a fantastic Quite ready one. stance. Love it. Now you know why she was a good bouncer. <laughs> yeah. You see that, it's like, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> it was so good. Oh, I miss you guys so much. That was oh. such a good, that was such a good experience. Like, it was a great a crew. Experience. Yeah. Great cast. Absolutely. This is and the, and the, 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 from the creative standpoint, everybody was fantastic as well. Like just really talented at what they did, the set decor, the, everything was just the costume, everything, right? was just so I, on yeah. point. I also have to say, I think you're, you're, you're lucky in, you know, sort of going from dark matter to, to transplant. And, and I mean, I, I don't work on transplant from what everything I hear. It's a pretty positive set. And uh, Joe Kay is your showrunner. I yes. believe the creator showrunner. Yeah. And you're really good things about Joe. Um, yeah. so, you know, I, uh, but it's, I think it's atypical though, to be honest with you to, you know, it's not always a pleasant, uh, working experience is what I got to say. In the industry. And, and I hear that all the time and I, you're mm -hmm. right. I totally lucked out. Mm -hmm. I just got to keep following the Joes around. I'm like, what's your showrunner? <laughs> so your showrunner a Joe? Cause if your showrunner is not a Joe, I mean, I think I'll hold out for the next show with a Joe as a showrunner. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Like I've been very, very spoiled in this business when it comes mm -hmm. to um, either not being kind of into the production enough for it to matter when it was an unhealthy set, let's say, mm -hmm. um, because I just didn't have a big enough role. And so I kind of just flew under the radar. Nobody really cared enough to bother me one way or the other, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that I've had those experiences, obviously, where other people have told me that those sets were super unhealthy and I was also just very naive and didn't realize it. But the ones that I was, or that I have been involved in and really kind of tied into have been like Dark Matter or Transplant where it's it's a fantastic, it's just a really great work environment where mm. the cast is really down to earth and the producers are down to earth and the directors are all amazing and everybody's really talented and knows and does their job really well. So I am, um, so yeah, I definitely feel lucky and spoiled, and I re I recognize that, but I I also don't have. I don't have the negative experience to compare it against, which is fine by me. Right. But I'm, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm not asking for one. Yeah. But but uh, but yeah, I definitely I definitely know that this is not, it's not the norm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you do well deserved though. Uh, by the way, this yeah. this picture, black and white pic, is uh, of course Android Zoe Palmer in the, in the foreground. And in the background was is um, Steve DeMarco, the late Steve DeMarco, who uh, passed away last year. Um, and uh, this was his uh, second uh, episode of the series. It was a really challenging episode, to be honest with you. I mean, I think it's probably the most challenging episode of the third season. Actually, there were yeah, maybe episode eleven is a pretty was a pretty challenging one, just because of the the, the locales, the location, the sets. 
um, you know, and and just the script itself, it was just kind of, frankly, all over the place. Um, you know, and he did a really great job. It's a beautiful picture. Hmm. Beautiful picture. I was thinking yeah. the same thing. Oh, yeah. Black there's... and white work. So Zoe. I'm going to talk about a talented actress, or act, I think we're seeing actor now, but Zoe. I love Zoe. I thought I thought she as the android, and just mm -hmm. as a person also, like what a like just intelligent, down to earth, really funny. Yeah. Um, and just like very kind and easy to be around person. Um, Aww. Yeah. Yeah. It's always yeah. pretty dope. But of course, like we've all seen her as Android and how, you know, what a great job she did with that. And I've seen her on a bunch of other shows as well. But yeah, she's she's pretty dope. I hope I get the chance to work with her again because yeah. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. Also, There's... that costume looks really warm. Like a like <laughs> yeah. cozy yeah. kind of warm. Yeah. Do, yeah. Um, remember, Joe, what episode was it that costume, the black one? You know which one I'm talking about? When she, she wears the black one? When she wears the black one? Yeah. Do you know that's, which one I'm talking that's, about? That's, yeah, that's next episode. Okay, oh. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I, I, we're talking about this episode. We're not going to get into next episode too much. But I mean, uh, next episode uh, is, there, there are two actually fan favorite episodes of the entire series, one and two, and number one is next week's episode. So really, Katie, you're in for a treat. Yes. Nice. Ooh. Mm -hmm. and, uh, fun. Uh, really quick, uh, Katie, did you did you think that um, that tape that they obviously were talking about Tabor, uh, which is David Hewlett's character? Did you think for any reason that he, he would uh, he would not show up? Were you surprised when he didn't show uh up? And uh, Aisha and, and Adrian showed up. I figure, like, the dude, if there's a war, he's kind of like probably the rat in the Titanic and just finds a way off somehow. <laughs> and it's like, you know what? I think I've done well enough for myself. Let me just hitchhike to the other galaxy. Like, I think that's probably what he did. So I was, I was a little surprised, but not entirely because, like, not in his character. I bet you he's just like, totally out makes sense yeah oh i love that everyone's saying that i'm going to enjoy this next episode hmm. <laughs> so uh, thank you michael weir uh our our new um our new fan um our the the new dark matter fan uh uh i get Dega, did you talk him into it or something no i i can't <laughs> hey, every once in a while he yeah, comes on and, and or i run onto some show that he's on We've kind of ran into each other for a couple of years now. And if you get a fan out of Michael, you have a fan for life. He is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. But how he found, I can't remember if I said something or where he picked it up at. I love the Groundhog Day episode and when she smacked him in the face for touching her food, I died laughing. Um, thank, <laughs> thank you for the generous super chat, Michael. Thank you. Um, sounds like an interesting episode. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, I have to wait until Monday to watch it. <laughs> and Joe, was there was there a logistical reason for David uh, not being uh, part of the uh, show? Or in yeah, three? let's say there were there were just kind of reasons that were kind of unrelated to the production or peripherally related. So you know, I kind of wanted. You know, the plan was to have the character, and then when I realized we were not going to go down that road, uh, I had to sort of do a shift, and that's why we created the character of Adrian, Adrian Marrow, played by the uh, uh, amazing uh, Mishka. It, it, do you pronounce it Tabo? Uh, I, mean, I think. Uh, yeah, mi mi Mishka Tabo, right? Yeah, Mishka. Anyways, I want to ask Misha, Misha, uh, Misha to come on in, in, a, in a future episode as well. Yeah. But uh, very, very, very funny guy, and I just kind of love what he did with the character. Like Aisha said, he he just has really, really fun instincts. 
totally. I totally, don't. I yeah. wanted to smack him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why his character. So I have horrible instinct when it comes to characters and their first impressions. Like I hated three, and now I love three. So I'm hoping I have a very nice transition like that. But like when he's just like, "Why do you think I have a gun? I have a buddy." I'm like. I want to smack you so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's clear that, that, that Solara wants to smack him really hard yeah. more than one occasion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, no. Aisha, oh. will... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, William Jackson asked, uh, does it, do you ever find it hard to switch to a French mindset? Um, I no, guess I'm not Francais. I'm not Francais. Je suis né à Montréal, fait que j'ai parlé toute ma vie en français, en même temps en anglais. So I can switch back and forth pretty easily entre français puis anglais, between French and English. It's a huge thing in Montreal. It sounds impressive when I'm doing it now, but Joe's like, yeah, that's totally standard Montreal behavior, no, being able no, to switch actually, back and forth. I, I, I was going to say, I mean, I grew up in uh, Montreal, actually more than kind of the West Island. Yeah. And your French oh. is infinitely better than mine. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I worked on a French show and stuff, and I had a lot of French friends, but my sister, for example, who's five years younger than I am, she's she's not quite as comfortable in French because she also grew up in the west part of the island um, where they just don't have as much contact with the French community. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I just kind of like sought out uh, a lot of French friends in the French community as well. So, um, and then I worked in the French industry for a bit. So, mm. yeah. Nice. Yeah. I can speak English and that's it because my high school was garbage. Uh <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Aisha, uh, you kind of answered this before, but Jacob asked, do you still do martial arts now or is it just for the show? Um, so I do uh, when I when I can. It depends on, this, on like where the lockdown restrictions are, but I like to do um, Muay Thai, Thai boxing, um, or just like English boxing for the time being just because I can't do any sparring with my knee for jiu-jitsu and I even just doing techniques and stuff it's just not stable enough right now um so I've been sticking to Thai boxing and 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 English boxing and uh hopefully by the time I'm done filming you know the restrictions will have lifted and my knee will be more stable and I can get back to it because I would love 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 to try to get another tournament in um and go back to you know two three hours of training four or five days a week like I miss it tremendously, so hopefully. Um, and Joe, uh, this is kind of from from a writer's point of view. Did you was it your intention to very subtly introduce this character, like in a very subtle way? Um, yes, I mean, you know, um... or maybe I'm just maybe we just think too much when we're with Joe. Yeah, I, mean, I, I guess I'm not sure if you play by, by subtle way. Uh, it's okay. It's my, it's, it I'm like, just. Uh, no, I picked up on it too. It's like you introduce her, like, not like a, oh, hey, I'm this and I'm this and I'm this and I'm this. And it was more of a, like, a, here's a little tidbit about me. Here's a little tidbit about me. Here's my resume. Yeah. Like, mm. it, it was very, as if she's it was very subtle. Yeah, because she's kind of like she kind of comes as baggage with this with this uh, Adrian guy. Well, baggage. She's not baggage, but I mean, like she's attached he's the to baggage. him. <laughs> but he's the baggage. Yeah, he's well, the baggage. Well, yeah. When you first introduce her, I mean, there's that scene where where he's like, you know, you get the feeling you know you're being followed, or it's my imagination to being followed, and and she's like, you know, it's not your imagination, it's your damn eyes. Basically, she's standing right behind him, and we're introduced to to Adrian, and then it's like, oh, who's this? And then you're introduced to her as kind of his bodyguard and yet really as the episode progresses she's the one who kind of steps up and takes the role she's the one who volunteers she's the one who, who goes with them she's the one who's basically like you know she's obviously had the combat training she sees the trap and is like you know look out uh and and then you'll you kind of see more of her as sort of the the the, the episodes progress but uh, you know i guess in that respect she is it's a subtle introduction but you quickly sort of you know, her character quickly builds over the course of this like one episode. I think I misspoke, Joe. I think maybe the thing is that I didn't expect her to grow so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I, uh, you know, when I, that was one of the things that I kind of liked about it uh, was that uh, she could very easily have continued exactly 
where she was, right? And, you know, kind of uh, following Adrian around and all that kind of stuff. But it was kind of nice to just kind of get all of these little tidbits and, and, and got to know her slowly. And all of these things started kind of coming up. And then, you know, you get a much better picture of who she is. Like, I remember really enjoying reading that when I read it. Um, because I also had no idea, you know, I learned about the entire thing through reading it, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then getting to, to kind of play it out. But I remember being really excited about the way that that kind of ramped, as opposed to like it being through this like crazy fight scene that happens and then there's smoke and she steps through and she's like, I'm Solara. You know what I mean? Like that <laughs> other kind of like, that was, the, that was the only other alternative by the way, but no, but yeah, that, that was cool. <laughs> And this is the oh, great God. scene, of course, uh, with your resume. Yeah. <laughs> I always get the vibe, and I don't know if you have this relationship with any of your younger siblings, but it seemed like, to me, she was the unwilling older babysitter, or <laughs> you had to take care of that little brat in the family, but you didn't want to do it, but you had to do it. And it just it seemed really cool how you put that together. Yeah, no, I, it was it, like, it's when things are really well written, it makes it really easy to play. And I think that that's, um, that's kind of the, the reality of it. You know what I mean? When a character is just so well written, it's it, you see, it, like as an actor, I just see if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like I, mm -hmm. I just kind of, I'm just showing you what the page, <laughs> what the page yeah. kind of says. Um, or you know about the dynamic and about uh, about the character and about Adrian's character and just kind of understanding how those two type of personalities might interact and then that gives me a better understanding of how I think Solara would react based on what I understand from Adrian's character and then of course uh, Mishka bringing in what he brings in on set just it it kind of happens on its on its own um, I find. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why we love skilled people like you, because you make it look easy. Something I could never do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, and Joe, uh, somebody, um, uh, somebody wrote. I, I forget who was in the chat that wrote. Um, maybe it was John. Uh, at, at that there was a that he saw a possible spinoff uh, with uh, with these two uh, new characters, with Aisha and, and Mishka's characters. Oh yeah, um, sure. You see that? Would you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If basically sci-fi was like we want to show with these two, I would have no problem writing the, uh, you know, the adventures of uh, of Adrian and Solara. Yeah, that would be. I'd be down. I'd be there. Mm. Um, and uh, Katie, were you surprised to see? Uh, were you surprised to see um, Sarah back in the mix? A little bit. I figured eventually someone's going to find out. Like, the way I thought it might happen is three's just walking around and then just, oh, what's, what's this thing? Oh, my gosh. Like, maybe just, like, wanders in. But I'm glad the android found her because it makes sense being, I guess, electronic beings that they would be able to make you relate a little bit. I'm excited to see how this plays out. Also, she has fabulous taste in clothes. Like, if I could make clothes in my mind, I would not be able to make that. I would literally make a graphic T-shirt and maybe some jeans. So, <laughs> even in the techno technological world, the wardrobe is so much better than I could ever hope for. <laughs> and, uh, Kate, I'll, uh, I'll just ask you real quick, too. Uh, what did you think about Six being the diplomat and, um, and kind of just even staying behind? I think... The diplomat thing totally played out perfectly because no one else on that crew could probably work out a negotiation like that. Like the second they pull the gun three, it's like, all right, like same with two. And it's five would just never be put in that situation because she's protected. But it's, it's like, I, I think it makes a lot of good sense. And so I really enjoyed that part. But when he was left behind, I don't like that. <laughs> I, I didn't want him to be left behind. I'm, I'm like, there's going to be some sort of catastrophe. Hopefully, I, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, so dark. No, so hopefully, there's something that brings them back together. <laughs> but I think this is definitely his the role that he has found the whole peace negotiator broker. Like, I think that's perfect for him. So mm -hmm. I'm happy for him, but I also want him to be roped back into the chaos. 
There was another good actor that I was paying attention to, this Trowgott commander. He did really well. You went from, you know, watching him see the explosion, his facial expressions, and to where you liked him, and then he was gone. So I, mm. he was good. He, he was Tell really me about good. how you like him and they're gone. Tell me about <laughs> that again, Adega. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> but I think one of the highlights for me, at least in this episode, is when Six did the quick draw and put down the uh, the leader of the revolution, yes. the mm. general. Everyone was wanting that, and that was that was good. Yeah, I mean it's it's bad to say. Yeah, I'm glad he murdered somebody, but yeah. <laughs> it's sci-fi. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, as long as I think um, the right people. <laughs> Roger, the the actor, he just got now nominated for a CSA award, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really, Roger Cross? Yeah, wow, well, that's yeah. amazing. Oh, he definitely sure deserves that. It's his picture up for that. Yeah, awesome. Hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Three seasons of this. Still going strong. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and um, so six, uh, six, six tries to be uh, the negotiator. Uh, it goes, it goes bad. Um, and w um, we also see that um, that uh, two. Two and six, you know, disagree on on the on what should be done, and and um, let me see. Also, I wanted I want to point out that character Adega that we were just talking about the 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 leader. The second they're like, "Oh, we're gonna go and retaliate," and then they're walking out. He's like, "Yeah, no, I'll buy you a drink." I was like, "He's dead." <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Like I've just I've become trained to it. I just expect if someone that I like lives, like that's why Aisha, I was so surprised you lived. Like, I was expecting everyone was gonna be dead. Traumatic Joe syndrome. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I have a shirt that says "Dark Matter." The show gives me trust issues. Uh, it, it's very true. <laughs> Um, and we also see here. We also see here oh, yeah. that uh, I love that mm. Rio is 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 he recruiting Joe? Is he uh, is he looking for a mate? What what is? No, this this is just uh, someone uh, in the academy, uh, and I think it, it was really John John Stead knew, yeah, uh, you know, a, a woman who you know was spectacular. Uh, in this regard, wanted to work it into the episode uh, and in the scene off the top. And so, um, you know, you know, he approached her and, and you know, the, the conceit is that, um, you know, it's all show for the new emperor. And so it just shows kind of also, um, even though he's kind of turning into our big bad for season three, there is that warmth in him where he kind of approaches her and says, you know, you know, you know, uh, once you once you graduate, you know there'll be a place for you in the in the court. And then you see his kind of relationship with uh, with Teku, played by Andrew Moody. Um, so I mean, you know, not necessarily rehabilitating the character because I don't think he needs rehabilitation, but just to remind the audience that he's he hasn't gone full dark side. Mm-hmm. I'll believe it when I see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but there's that end scene when he says, take out the crew of the Raza. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> uh, and I'm sorry for it. some of you guys who are getting some flashing or flickering. I'm not sure what that is. It might be the connection. Um, and uh, okay, so um, all right. I and I should on occasion. It's not too bad usually. Aisha, uh, is there um is there anything you want to you want to let us know that you that maybe that's not that, that you're working on right now that, that really hasn't been out there yet or that you can talk about of course? Um no. <laughs> I, I, I wish there was. 
Um, but no, I, well, I mean, transplant, of course. Yeah, transplant. I can't really say anything about what's going on for season two, but we are filming it, and it is going really well. And um, personally, so far, anyways, I'm loving season two even more than season one. So I'm really excited to see how the public kind of reacts to to the way things are progressing. Um, but I mean, we're not even because of the COVID situation. We're not really able to work on anything else while we're filming. Mm. Um, we can't be in the like main cast bubble on one show and then be on any other show. So there's no no opportunity for that now. But I, I like I said it a million times, just in case you never know who's watching or when Joe will pull something out. But <laughs> I really miss doing actiony stuff. So I'm hoping that when when transplant wraps that you know maybe i get an opportunity to do something um back in the action sci-fi realm even if it's just for a little bit mm. uh, to reconnect with that because i miss it so much so that's what i'm kind of have fingers crossed for but i won't be able to do anything until after august so aisha who did you who did you most get along with in the cast with uh uh with regards to the, the cast they, they were very welcoming when you when you joined yeah yeah, I mean, I can't think of anybody I didn't get along with. Um, I think that I had, as is normal, I think, like, you know, you have kind of like a different interaction or you kind of bond or connect with different people for different reasons or based on different things. Um, and uh, obviously, like, a lot of the work that I did was with, um, was with Mishka um, because we were together all the time. Um, but I'd say that... Uh, Melissa, I got along with Melissa very well, um, and so I, I like I spoke to Melissa quite a bit, um, and uh, and Zoe, I just thought that Zoe was just really kind of easy to be around and fun and funny to talk to and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Asia, everybody everybody was great, you know, like everybody was was really really awesome. Um, yeah, I can't I have no I have no complaints. It was just. <laughs> is all around good. You know what? Everything is just great. So it's kind of hard to pick a kind of like a standout, right? Because everything was awesome. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh, Joe, do you want to take Jeff Beeler's question? Uh, were Shrike and Jasper mapped out as characters? Um, I had in my head who these characters were, yes. And so, you know, the reference here is, of course, to uh, the members of the former crew where, where Five's talking to to um, Adrian and ask, and and he mentions a former crew, and he mentions Shrek and Jasper, and and Five's like, what Shrek and Jasper? What happened to them? And his response is, I think Portia happened to them, and uh, <laughs> you know, we actually get to find out what happened to Shrek and Jasper in a future episode. No way! Mm. Oh, oh, cool. Mm. Joe, would you ever would you ever pitch a prequel idea to you know Dark Matter? I hate prequels. I can I just say how much I really, really, really hate prequels. We know where it ends up. So honestly, who cares? Honestly, I, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Though. Don't don't hold back, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so unlikely. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Um, Raza Crew, uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, Raza Crew has found family. Always uh, Raza Crew as found family, always a guiding concept? Yes, absolutely. In fact, all of, I think all good science fiction is about fam family and found family, whether it's, you know, I keep on saying the crew of the Enterprise or the rebel faction in Star Wars or Team SG-1 going through the gate or the crew of the Raza. You know, they they are kind of, you know, they may not be kind of blood related and yet they are a family and it's something thematically we play out all the time in the show specifically and especially uh with that um the mess the table is kind of like the dinner table and kind of the way they they like there was a what was a recent episode where uh five like the kid takes her food and she's going to go to her room and 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 six's character is like well where do you think you're going you're going to sit down and we're going to you know sit down like a family and uh and you know eventually the android is actually taking a seat at the table as well. So she's kind of being accepted, you know, symbolically into the fold. So yes, uh, I, I am a firm believer in all great sci-fi is about found, found family. Aww. 
And Katie, do you want to tell our friend Kronos what to do if he hasn't seen the show yet? If he hasn't seen Dark Matter yet? <laughs> Go back, watch one every Monday, and watch our stream <laughs> afterwards. And you have to limit yourself to one a week because that's how you get the full experience. Mm. <laughs> Actually, it really is. I'm glad that I haven't binged it because, I mean, we've been doing this for a, a year now. And I'm still being able to enjoy the show and have new content a year on rather than that's just binging it in two days. Mm -hmm. which I have already done with another show. But still, no. it's it's a lot better. And I think it's healthier this way. So do it, also, do it one a week. But it's also good. You don't have to deal with hiatuses either. So True. you're just going, you know, straight through. Exactly. So mm -hmm. don't, go do that. <laughs> and then come back yeah. and watch our show. Doctor's orders, Kronos. Get on it. <laughs> Yes, come back next week and tell us how. Tell us if you're uh, if you've caught up to season three, Kronos. Oh gosh, that would be a marathon. <laughs> yes, that's Katie. Yes. Um, and uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I when I was when I first watched this uh, Dark Matter, I've kind of flew through season three. Um, I don't. I didn't remember this episode very well. Mm. Um, so it was nice to watch it again. I, I have to be honest. This episode. For me, what always makes the episodes are the character moments. And so for, for me, the standouts were the introduction of, 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 uh, of Solara and, and Adrian and those, you know, kind of those, those character moments, like, you know, the, the android with, with, with Sarah, you know, that, that final moment where, where five comes clean and, you know, three just gets up and doesn't say anything. Um, those moments between um six and two when they're you know they're, they're discussing sort of what is the right thing but just structurally this episode was a bit how do you how should i put it kind of uh disparate and dispersed it was a tough episode and it's, it's kind of crazy because this was an episode that i kind of it just kind of never really came together for me and 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 i struggled with it for a long time whereas the episode you're going to see next week, I wrote in a day, and it was oh, like the wow. it, it it was it, it it was an episode that basically in the room, whereas this one we basically broke in the room. It, it, the next episode is a, is an episode in the room. We tried to break in the room and we couldn't because basically we kept on arguing about how we'll go, how we'll not go, and so I just set it aside. And it was unlike any other episode of of, of Dark Matter. I didn't have an outline. And I just sat down one day, one morning, and I just started writing. And I pretty much more or less wrote the episode in a day. But it turned out to be the fan favorite. So, you know, I guess that's what I, I maybe I, I really should do more of is just kind of wing it. That's like off of that. an A on a paper in college inspiration. and you write till the night before. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, but, but also my point is, you know, like Aisha, we're talking about the fact that I, I come back and I kind of review the episodes because when I'm in production, I will watch the director's cut. I'll watch the, you know, go into editing and I'll rewatch and rewatch the episodes and then I'll watch the mix. But I never really watch the finished product. So when I watch the finished product with the visual effects and everything, it is kind of a different experience. And there's some episodes that I remember really liking that I didn't really like as much on, on subsequent viewing for whatever reason. And then there are other episodes where, you know, I didn't think they turned out great, but then I watched them again and I'm like, I'm pleasantly surprised. And then there were episodes like this one where, you know, I was like not totally happy with it when it was first produced. And now watching it again, I'm still not totally happy with it. And yet, you know, I, I, at the end of the day, I have to say, you know, I guess they can't all be winners, but I mean, what makes them special are those character moments. Uh, right. Joe, I'll oh, go ahead, Dega. Yeah, I was just going to ask Aisha, how much homework did you do before you started your part? Once you got the role, did you go back and watch season one and two? Um, I think I watched season one and two before. Oh, um, good. Yeah, because like I think it's I found out about the show after uh, auditioning for for Nix, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of like, oh, this is really cool. So I think I, if I remember correctly, I, I think I had kind of caught up at least one i don't know if season two was out entirely yet but i know that i had already started watching the show like it wasn't um completely foreign to me right um when i got there you have nerd in your blood that's a good thing yeah <laughs> yeah i'm proud of it 
Uh, Aisha and uh, Nate uh, reminds us uh, to ask you, uh, have you ever watched uh, Seth MacFarlane's The Orville? I've watched a few episodes of it. I think I've, I maybe watched the first season. Um, nice. But I don't know what has happened to me since I became an actor, but I watch less and less TV <laughs> yeah. shows and movies. Sure. It's really weird. Like, I, I, I don't watch TV and movies. I watch... I mean... If I do watch stuff, it tends to be sci-fi, sci-fi stuff or action stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. So I think I, I'm pretty sure that I've watched at least a season of it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and Joe, you did have uh, there was a, a three uh, a great three line in this episode um, where he says, um, uh, oh, "She's usually the one who calms me down." So this is new territory here. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, when I watched that, I laughed out loud. The problem is I was still <clears throat> in work's parking lot. Uh, <laughs> so you look like a crazy I, person? Someone walked by and yeah, I look like a crazy person. <laughs> 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 just sitting there laughing in nothingness. Uh, That's like me right now. I'm sitting in a parking lot <laughs> laughing <laughs> myself. Uh. Someone's watching like, wow, you are having a real good talk with yourself. <laughs> And totally. Time Profit asks how many uh, pages per script uh, per episode, Joe? How many? It really episodes? depends. It really depends. I mean, usually it's 50. I, I usually aim for about 54, 55 pages um, with the understanding that, I mean, usually you, you shoot maybe, I think, like seven, about seven pages, seven, eight pages a, a, a day. And the episode has to board, meaning basically they put together a schedule and you have a, like whatever seven days to shoot the episode. So basically, break that down seven, you know, uh, seven days, eight pages a day, about fifty six. Uh, the problem is that sometimes it it can kind of vary. On on Stargate SG one, we used to write fifty two, fifty three uh, uh, page scripts, and then when we went to Atlantis, we were writing fifty two, fifty three page scripts, and they kept on coming in short, and really what you want to do is overwrite and underwrite because the last thing you want to do is come up with the having to come up with the extra scenes right whereas it's easier to just cut um but uh, you know in, in atlantis david hewlett was a fast talker so because of that those <laughs> those episodes ended up scripts ended up being 58 59 pages and as a result could didn't really board and we would have to like you know just find ways to sort of get it done. So in the case That's of Dark funny. Matter though, I think there was a kind of an average talking speed for the cast. Uh, so it was about, you know, I think 53, 54 pages. I never thought about that. Like what if you have a fast talker or a slow talker, mm -hmm. that would totally screw with your time if they're a lead. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Huh. Uh, Joe, and uh, you just, uh, the, you brought up an interesting question. Um, now that this is now that there's a, this uh, non-broadcast television, but the streaming environment, uh, is it changing at all? Because you may not have limitations, the time limitations you've always had. Is it? Is yeah, it, that's something else. Are I mean, you working differently? Um, I am personally not working differently. Um, I mean, I, I think in some respects it can be freeing in that you don't have to hit a certain mark in terms of time that's if you happen to be selling to a streamer but when you when you develop something you don't know where it's going to end up so you can't just assume it's going to end up at a streamer so for that reason i still use the five act structure and frankly even if i was to do a a, a netflix show i mean the five act structure is created for commercial breaks right it's it's you know you build up towards that da 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 moment and then you cut the commercial and then you come back and hopefully people will stick around because it was a da 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 moment um but you know, when you break a story, I still like to use a five act structure. And um, even if I end up on a stream or Netflix that doesn't have any commercials where I won't really, um, it, it, it wouldn't be required. I still like the rising and falling action of a, of a five act structure or a four act structure. In fact, you know, if I had to break a story just purely on its own standing without, without act breaks, uh, I think I would be lost. I, I need those signposts. Um, Aisha, Jeff Beeler asks, uh, before, uh, before you auditioned, were you watching the show and who was your favorite character? Um, I think I liked four a lot. I was a big fan of four. Mm. Um, the show. 
study such a badass. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's cute. But, uh, you know, uh, but yeah, four was my favorite character before the show. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't ask. Oh, Dega. Oh, got there yet. All right. They had the, uh, the, was it a wolf call? What is it that you do for the whiskey at lunch? Yeah, yeah, that was Norman Denver's wolf. Yeah, yeah. did you do that, Aisha? Did you join him? So, ah, I here we joined go. him once. Um, it was like my first day there. It was the same day that I attempted to choke Joe out. Um, <laughs> was, that, was that? Did you have the whiskey before or after you tried to uh, kill me? I don't. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. Oh yeah. boy. But uh, I don't drink a lot to begin with, um, and uh, <laughs> I think like prior to going on set, the last time I had drank was a long time ago at a party where when they hand you a shot glass, you take a shot. You don't, you know, sip. Sip the whiskey. So. Oh. <laughs> I didn't no. doubt it. Everyone was like, I was like, I don't know. What, I don't know how to do whiskey. I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. So that that was my one and only invite to the whiskey. The whiskey. <laughs> I don't know how to do whiskey, but I do know how to do a chokehold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's probably how it came about, too. Kind of like, ah, I need to redeem myself really quiet, really quick. You, come here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Scare them into silence. Yeah, exactly. Anybody judge me, I'll put him to sleep. I swear I'll put him to sleep. <laughs> uh, Joe, Blackjack asks, um, were there, how, how many Dark Matter scenes were, were cut that you, you know, that you would have preferred them be in the broadcast version? You know, not really that many. And in fact, I've posted them. Um, I think there was like a, a scene from the I say from like the the uh, the second episode uh, with the guys in the in in the shuttle, there was a a scene from I think season two with I think Nix and uh, and and uh, and four, or maybe or maybe Nix and uh, and and two. Um, but very few, and then there was one scene that was actually reshot. To be more dynamic, uh, and that was uh, that was season, that was a scene from uh, episode three in season one. Uh, but other than that, it was very rare. I mean, in season one, we were coming in short, and that's why I say basically whenever we were coming in short, I had, I would just write another android scene, and the android mm -hmm. character who was supposed to be a supporting character got her own arc. Uh, as a result of those extra scenes, and I just kept on going back to the Android because Zoe was so great. Uh, so, you know, sometimes it works out. <laughs> um, That's uh, pretty cool. I, hmm. Aisha, we haven't had uh, we haven't asked this question in a long time, actually, um, but I just remembered it. Uh, if you had to write Joe into a character for Dark Matter, oh what would that character be? Oh, I wish I had some forewarning to think about this. <laughs> Hero or so villain? A lot of, a lot of people had, have, have uh, introduced him as an evil villain. But. No, I think Joe would have made an excellent character. And this has nothing to do with who he actually is, which is why I find this really funny. Because I think I'd just love to see him in this kind of role. But like, um, I think that if the ship had you know, maybe somewhere mid season two discovered that the ship had been, it like was being maintained by a mechanic. <laughs> an anti -social, you know, antisocial, possibly alcoholic <laughs> mechanic. Hiding out in the bowels of the ship that you never yeah, saw. Exactly. I like and that. Like, you know, and then like, he would just kind of like slowly kind of integrate his way into like this family, right? But he's not a numbered member and we don't necessarily know what he knows or doesn't know. He might know a little bit more. He might've forgotten it because he's been, you know, drinking a lot. We don't know. <laughs> he may be drinking like some special space juice or like yeah. have some kind of weird space addiction that we don't know about. But like, he's that character who like randomly throws out knowledge and information. You know what I mean? We're all like, how does he know more about all these characters than any of the other characters? And he's like, ah, screw you. I'm going to go fix the alternator is broken or something. Like, and he just disappears again, like that guy. 
Yeah. 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 I love it. Love it. I look. I look forward to your pi- reading your pilot. <laughs> you have to help me write it. Yeah. Watch that gets picked up, Joe. Like that. I, I would. I would. I would watch the hell out of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, his three piece suits always made me think. Uh, to foe and him had a thing, but he worked for a leadership in a, a, a different uh, corporation, so they had to be enemies. I've been in love. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be pretty good, actually. That'd be really good. I like Aisha's better. Sorry, Adega. That's okay. <laughs> I just, I, the, the fact that there could just be this drunk engineer just crawling, barely crawling through a conduit, <laughs> and Five's like... I've never seen you before. What are you? Like, I can't do that. Yeah. And he's like, they're all kind of scared of him, but he's not scared of any of them. He's like, ah, screw you. Stop. Like, what are you looking at? You know what I mean? Takes the bottle. Hey, kid, you want, you want some, kid? Well, yeah. Exactly. All I'm negotiating. You know, like that guy. I just think it would just be, yeah. That's- it's so far from who he is. Like, it'd just be, it would be really funny. <laughs> Time Prophet says Joe would make a great uh, gal- uh, intergalactic uh, godfather type person. Oh, yeah, you. that's true. That's true. Mm. It's all the suit. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Um, well, I I uh, I I know that uh, last week we run way we ran way over, and uh, because we had some technical problems. And um, I, I, I really want to thank uh, Aisha for, for joining us. It was such an honor. And I, 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 I'm, I, I'm kind of worried that I want you to get underway if you need to be somewhere. I'm kind of worried before that it's it dark. dark. Yeah, yeah I got an hour dark. to make it to the border before I'm uh, uh, illegal, essentially. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, turn your back. Go, go. Mm. Drive! We'll have to make it to the You got to make it to the border sure. crossing before I'm picked up by the. Well, thanks for yeah. joining us. It was great seeing you. Like I said, I, you know, you were the last, uh, you were actually the last social interaction I had before, yeah. you know, as well, you know, the patios were still open and hopefully we can do it again. Absolutely. You know? Actually, I have, I, I, I was in um, Ottawa recently, Joe, and I picked something up for you. What? It's a so traditional have- kind of gift that I bring for you. You know, every now and then. You know what? I've, I've, I think after the first season uh, or, or, or season two shooting, I ended up meeting uh, Aisha for uh, for uh, lunch, Kemi and I, and she got me like a dozen bottles of different <laughs> hot sauces <laughs> that were really nice. amazing, and and just like some of them kind of like mind blastingly uh, hot. So uh, <laughs> I thank you. Not necessary, but I thank you. And I look forward to seeing you. And say hi to your sis for me. I will. Yeah, totally. And um, and it was so nice to see you. Thanks so much for, for having me, guys. It was a lot of fun to yeah. to revisit this fantastic kind of phase of my life. And and, uh, and so I just, yeah, I'm really grateful for the opportunity. So thank you for having me. Well, thank you. You are Check always out. welcome back, Aisha. And if you ever need any support on Twitter or, or social media, let us know for anything. Thank you. Uh, you Thanks. Wanna... Yeah. Get me an action job. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> we will but keep yeah, that thank... in mind. We will keep yeah. that in mind. Yeah. Please do. Please yeah. do. Please. But, but yeah, I'll definitely stop by again. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Aww, thank you, Aisha. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Have fun crossing Have the good. border. Thanks. I'll let you know if I make it. Yeah. Or you'll hear about it on the news. <laughs> I'll cover it in the morning. That'd be a, That'd be fun. All right, guys. See you. Thank Bye. you. Bye, Aisha. Take care. Bye. And uh, any final thoughts from uh, from the three of you? Just another one of the actors or people behind the scenes that gets on and was just absolutely wonderful to have on your show. And Mm -hmm. I can't imagine going to work being surrounded by so many good people all the time. I I didn't have the experience. I went to work, you know, the people that worked for me were great, but you have people that come in are sick, beat up, Mm -hmm. angry because of their pain. You know, Mm -hmm. just to have so many good people around you all the time, that had to have been wonderful. Yeah, it was. It was. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can get back to it again sometime in the not too distant future. Any, uh, any, would you like to share any updates, Joe, on anything? That- uh, no, I mean, basically just 
you know, development continues apace. We're pitching shows, and uh, like I said, I uh, I uh, I will take a run uh, at a, a dark matter mini series. You know, in in I think I'm I'm still a couple of months away from putting together a proper pitch, but I will let you all know, and I'll report back. Hopefully, by the time we get around to the finale, I will have word either way. Uh, Joe, uh, dark dark matter Twitter storm. In the, um, in the near future, maybe, maybe, yeah. We're here. We're here for you. Thank when you. you need, when you tell us, thank you. Good. I really appreciate it. As always, thank you. And next week, uh, you know, I said it's a fan favorite, but it's actually, you know, I have two two favorite episodes, and they're both the episodes that uh, that um, you know the fans chose as well. So uh, it there, you know, it, it's. Uh, it's kind of a, a cuckoo bananas episode, but I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I'm excited. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Katie. Uh, thank you, Dega. Thank you, Joe. And yes, everybody, make sure you keep watching Joe's blog and uh, look for his posts on Twitter. Um, also, thanks again to Gap, to Tom, and to Katie for that uh, wonderful, uh, 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 what is it called, trailer. <laughs> uh, for the uh, teaser and uh, thank you uh, to uh, Tom, Jeff Beeler, Time Prophet Matt Ryan, Kronos, Rapunzel um, uh, El Minster everybody who's been in here, Nate uh, Sarah Jett uh, Alan Cox, William Jackson everybody, Jerry Lahane uh, everybody who's been in here uh, have a great uh, have a great week guys, stay safe and don't forget to watch your next uh episode of Dark Matter for next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>